Africa, the second largest continent on Earth and home to over 680 million people. More than 300 million of Africa's inhabitants depend on maize as their main food source. However, over the last 10 years, three out of every four severe droughts occurred in Africa. With maize being highly susceptible to drought, this makes farming risky for millions of small-scale farmers who rely on rainfall to water their crops. Due to crop failure, the adoption and use of improved farming techniques has been very low. This, in turn, leads to consistent low yields, which impacts negatively on the economies of many African countries. Emergency food aid is the primary response to the acute effects of drought and food security in Africa and many parts of the world. Despite the fact that it's both expensive and short-term, Identifying ways to mitigate drought risk, stabilize yields, and encouraging small-scale farmers to adopt best management practices is fundamental to realizing food security and improved livelihoods for the continent. To alleviate the effects of drought, AATF is leading a public-private partnership called Water Efficient Maize for Africa. AATF is African Agricultural Technology Foundation. It's a public-private uh, institute that is helping to assess technologies, uh, proprietary technologies, and make them available to our farmers royalty free. And WEMA is one of those projects that AATF has helped to assess from technology holder to make available to African farmers. And WEMA is Water Efficient Maze for Africa. It's a public-private partnership that is that has been set up to address the problem of drought by developing drought-tolerant maize for Africa using conventional and biotechnology approaches. Since the launch of the WEMA project in March 2008, the WEMA Kenya team has organized planning meetings, stakeholder fora, and field activities to ensure the project achieves its objectives. A WEMA stakeholder forum held at the Kenya Agricultural Research Institute headquarters was a time for the stakeholders to learn from each other's experiences. We are gathered here today as WEMA stakeholders to address the critical issue of food security in our country. Frequent and prolonged droughts made worse by the global climate change which are nowadays experienced even in areas hitherto known as wet areas, are negatively affecting food production, more so maize, which is our staple crop in this country. This project, WEMA, addresses this constraint by combining conventional breeding and biotechnology to develop new African broad tolerant maize varieties by incorporating the best technologies available internationally. We value the relationship between public and private partnerships. Because Presentations were done by AATF, CIMIT. Our main mandate is to conserve maize gen genetic resources. Monsanto. Our contributions and roles of Monsanto in the Wema project. And the Kenya Agricultural Research Institute. Uh, we have uh, four main partners. We have Monsanto, we have CIMIT, we have AATF, and also we have natural agricultural systems of five different countries. And the countries that are involved are Kenya, Uganda, Mozambique, Tanzania, and the Republic of South Africa. Each partner, for example, the natural agricultural systems provide expertise in field trials. We also test the drought tolerant maize as soon as uh, we get uh, the, the maize into the system. We also get capacity building opportunities. Uh, within the systems. From CIMIT, which is a world leader in cereal research, a particular maize and wheat, uh, we're going to get germplasm, which is specifically suited for African agroecological uh, agro zones. AATF, which is a unique African institution, negotiated the technology that we obtained from one of our partners 
uh, Monsanto, which is a world leader in uh, marker assisted breeding, gene discovery, trade development, and trade licensing. And we got our financial support through AATF from the Bill and Merida Gates Foundation and the Howard G. Buffett Foundation. If we are going to work together as a, as a sector, then we need to know what each one of us is doing to avoid du duplication of effort and also learn from each other's experience. And for me, for Wema, I'm happy that I have actually been kept informed on what's going on. The information flow has been good so far. I, I would like to believe that this is going to continue. And other projects are also going to emulate what uh, Wema has been doing. Because communication is so important. We, we really need to know what you are doing out there. And especially for that farmer that you are wa working for. He needs to know what you are doing and how far you have, how far you have gone, and if there is any adjustment to be done along the way. So as a ministry, we will make sure that we support you in every way that we can. We make the, the, um, the environment as conducive as possible, and we facilitate in whatever way we can. A question and answer session was an opportunity for every participant to air their concerns, give suggestions, and seek for clarifications. Uh, one of the concerns that I always feel, especially when I'm in, the, in my own village back home, is that uh, there isn't sufficient information that, uh, has, uh, that, that reaches the small-scale farmer out there in the, in the villages on the choice of seed to plant. This formed an important platform for the leading team to see the project from different perspectives and to ensure no stakeholder is left behind in the implementation process. Ever since I was a kid, in Zimbabwe there is a culture of using hybrid seed. We normally do not take seed which we harvested last year to grow this year. Every contribution was carefully recorded by the Wema Kenya communication team for use in subsequent planning meetings. Wema project is divided into two phases. Phase one is five years long and will see the development of new African drought-tolerant maize varieties. The second phase will include completing the development and bringing the product to the market royalty-free through African seed companies. Phase one of the project is on course. Kenya Agricultural Research Institute put up trial facilities to ensure that health and environmental safety of the improved crop is comparable to that of traditional maize. A suitable location was identified and planting of a mock trial done in September of 2009. Mock trials simulate the steps that will be carried when the actual confined field trials for the genetically engineered maize varieties begin. Mock trials also provide a chance for researchers to fine-tune the procedures on crop environmental interactions and agronomic performance of an experimental crop in a safe and contained manner. The facility you're studying in is called the Open Quarantine Facility. The facility itself is isolated because it is planted uh, 500 meters away from the nearest maize crop. And this makes sure that uh, the, the pollen within the field is confined, is co confined within the facility itself and therefore reducing the risk of that pollen going to pollinate other materials. The reason why Kiboko is such an ideal place to do drought trials is because between the month of June to the month of November there is barely, there is barely uh, any rain here. So if you plant uh, your drought trials between the, period, the window of drought, there is no possibility of that crop getting rain when it is not required. From what you have learned with this material, it is going to make it more efficient 
when we start running the actual trials within the field. And this is all geared towards making sure that the farmers get varieties that can produce, can give them a crop when we have moderate drought, particularly in the areas that have inadequate moisture. The facility has met all requirements put in place by the Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Service. The National Biosafety Committee visited the site to ensure all regulations were adhered to. Any visitor is required to disinfect their feet and record their names. Washing hands and equipment before leaving reduces chances of contamination. An elaborate irrigation system has been connected to the plot, complete with a water source and a dam. To keep away wild animals, a trench surrounding the fence has been dug. The facility is also guarded on a 24-hour basis with plans underway to erect an electric fence. On maturity, each variety was separately harvested, shelled, measured, and the necessary data recorded. Waste materials were then burned in an incineration pit located within the compound. There is no risk assessment that has been done. That's why we are burning up, so that there will be no queries on the environment and all other related issues. With the success of the mock trial, confined field trials will then follow. These are small restricted experimental trials that are required before regulatory approval to commercialize genetically modified crops is given. <laughs> Wema's success will not only depend on the commitment and focus of each individual partner, but also the synergy between all partners. Wema can only achieve its goal when we have these kind of partnerships. Institutions have comparative advantage. Ministries have a comparative advantage. The private sector has some comparative advantage. And therefore, when we bring these teams of people together, what we are saying, these multidisciplinary teams would move the agenda very quickly for WEMA. The objectives of the project will be met. But lone rangers cannot actually now be the people to move a project like this. The ministry will continue to make sure that it takes care of these uh, crop varieties wh where the commercial companies are not interested because they cannot make money. That will continue to be the responsibility of the ministry to make sure that we have enough quantities of that kind of seed. And where necessary, we will continue through our orphan crop program to provide that seed free of charge to the deserving farmers. At the successful completion of this project, a large number of small-scale farmers will have access to affordable, drought-tolerant maize seeds. This will translate to increased yields, better income, and a smile on the faces of millions of farmers across Africa.